Hello and welcome to this section of the circuit analysis tutor. Here we're going to continue working with the circuit we have on the board and we're going to learn how to calculate the Thevenin equivalent resistance, the Thevenin resistance of this circuit, uh, using a different method than what we did in the last section. The method we use in the last section is the granddaddy way. It's the way you always learn first and it's always correct. So you always do it and you always have to know how to do it. Uh, that method involves calculating the short circuit current between A and B and then using Ohm's law basically to calculate R Thevenin. That's always going to work, so if you get stuck, use it. But most books and most teachers are going to want you to know another method uh, for calculating the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Before I show you that method though, let me kind of walk you through why it works. Let me ask you a question. If I drew on the board, let me go ahead and slide this board out of the way to kind of uh, show you what I'm talking about over here. What if I drew on the board a resistor, a single resistor, okay? And I put, you know, A and B, let's say. So this is something you pull out of your toolbox, you know, as a single resistor. And you don't know the value of that resistor. And I ask you, how do you calculate or measure in the lab what the value of this resistance is? Let's say you get a resistor, it doesn't say it's 10 ohms or 5 ohms. It doesn't say at all, you have, and it doesn't have any, any rings or anything. You have no idea what, if it's 1 ohm, 10 ohms, 30 ohms or a million ohms, you don't know. But you'd like to find out by measurement. How do you think you'd find out? Why do you think you'd do that? Well, you've got to be able to hook it up to some machine. I mean, we all know we can put it into a, a multimeter, right? And it measures the resistance. So it's a good question. How do you think multimeters work, right? They don't just have a magic resistance thing, a resistance measurer that you go buy from the store. There's got to be some mathematical way to figure it out. Well, it turns out that there is. And what you could do, if you were clever, is you could take this resistor and you could hook it up to, well, there's a couple ways you could do it, but you could hook it up to, a, let's say you're gonna hook it up to a current source, right? So you have a current source in the lab and, and this current source, let's say it's known, let's say it's one amp current source. So what you would do is you would hook this resistor up to a known current source of one amp, let's say. It doesn't matter if it's one, it could be five milliamps, it could be anything, but let's say it's one amp. Then as soon as you connect it like this, the current is going to go around and through the resistor and back around and back around. It's going to basically go in a loop forever, and you know, since you have this plugged into the wall, it'll literally go forever. Or if it were a battery, until the battery runs down. But the, no matter what, you know that because it's a current source, there is one amp flowing through that resistor. Oh, for definite positive sure, you know this because it's a constant current source. So there's one amp going through that resistor. Now, while this one amp is flowing through this resistor, you could measure the voltage drop across. You know that the, volt, the current's flowing this way, so you know there's going to be a, po a, a voltage drop like this across that resistor. And you can measure that with a, a voltmeter, right? So what this tells you is if you have an unknown resistance and I put a known current through it and I measure the resulting voltage drop, what this tells me is I know everything I need to know about that resistor because I know what's the voltage drop across the resistor and I also know how much current's flowing through the resistor. And so anytime I know those two things, I can use Ohm's law. V is equal to I R, right? I know the voltage and I know the current. So the resistance is V over I. I know the voltage across the resistor, I've measured it. I know the current flowing through the resistor. That is, you know, known, given, because I've set up a test on a test bench somewhere. So I can calculate the value of this resistance by measurement, by putting a test source. So this is like a test source. It's not something part of the circuit or anything that I care about, it's just a test. I hook it up, I shove current through there, and then I measure the resulting voltage